In our daily lives, we can observe patterns in natural as well as man-made objects. For instance, look at the child playing with his toy pyramid set. How many bricks will he need to finish the pyramid with one brick at the top? How many bricks will he have in the fourth row? Not too difficult to determine, is it? However, consider a situation where the pyramid is much higher, maybe 200 bricks. How many bricks would the child need for the 54th row? It's a little more difficult to figure out, right? You may often need to make such calculations, whatever field you choose to work. For example, in construction activities or even in financial matters, you will need to work with patterns. You need to learn to analyze and predict patterns, also called progressions, to be able to resolve such problems. Progression can be arithmetic, geometric or harmonic. In this lesson, you will learn about arithmetic progression. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify an arithmetic progression or AP, define arithmetic progression, calculate the common difference of an AP, and derive and apply the formula for general term. To understand progression, take a look at some sequences. For example, consider the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. You need to predict the fifth term in this sequence. If you analyze the sequence, you will find a constant between every two successive terms in the sequence. For instance, 4 equals 2 plus 2, 6 equals 2 plus 4, 8 equals 2 plus 6. As you can see, the constant is 2. Therefore, fifth term equals constant plus fourth term, which is 10 equals 2 plus 8. Now, let us look at another sequence with fractions. Minus 1 upon 2, 0, 1 upon 2, 1, and so on. In this sequence, the constant is 1 upon 2. Consider the following sequences 4, 9, 11, 13, and so on. And minus 8, minus 5, 0, 1, and so on. You can see that there is no constant between the terms in either of these sequences. Based on this data, it will not be possible to obtain the next term in any of these sequences because there is no visible pattern. The pattern in the first two examples shows that you can obtain successive terms by adding a fixed number or a constant to the preceding terms. Such a list of numbers is said to form an arithmetic progression. So, an arithmetic progression or AP is a sequence of numbers or terms in which each term is obtained by adding a constant to the preceding term. This fixed number or constant is called the common difference of the arithmetic progression. It is represented by D. Now remember, if D is not constant, then the sequence is not an AP. D can be a positive number, negative number or zero. Consider the following problems regarding arithmetic progression. Find the sixth term in the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. Find the thirteenth term in the sequence minus 15, minus 11, minus 7, minus 3, and so on. John is saving money in a bank. He deposits 100 rupees in the first week. Later, he deposits 25 rupees in the account every week. What will be the amount in his account at the end of the 20th week? It is easy to find the sixth term in the sequence in problem 1. However, problem 2 and 3 typically may take you a while to work out. To solve such problems quickly and easily, you can derive a formula to determine the general term, that is, the nth term or the last term in a sequence. 
Let us consider problem 3. After saving 100 rupees in the first week, John saves 25 rupees every week. Therefore, the common difference, D, in John's savings every week is 25. Thus, the balance in John's account is 100 in the first week, 100 plus 25 in the second week, 100 plus 2 multiplied by 25 in the third week, and so on. Let John's savings in the first week, that is, the first term in the sequence, be A. In this problem, 100 equals A. The common difference, 25 equals D. As you can see from the table, the general form of AP is A, A plus D, A plus 2D, and so on. If you denote the first term, A, as T1, the second term, A plus D, as T2, the third term, A plus 2D, as T3, and so on. Then you get T2 equals A plus 2 minus 1 multiplied by D, and T3 equals A plus 3 minus 1 multiplied by D. You can generalize this to get the 20th term, which is A plus 20 minus 1 multiplied by D. Therefore, T20 equals 100 plus 20 minus 1 multiplied by 25. On solving, you get T20 as 575. In other words, you come to know that John's total savings in the 20th week will be 575 rupees. T20 equals 100 plus 20 minus 1 multiplied by 25. If you substitute 20 with n in the above calculation, you will get a general formula for calculating the nth term of an AP. Thus, Tn equals A plus n minus 1 multiplied by D, where Tn equals last term of the progression. A equals first term. D equals common difference. The number of terms of an arithmetic progression whose A, D and Tn are given is n equals to tn minus a divided by d plus 1. A mason is laying bricks for a narrow staircase. For every step, he needs to add 4 bricks to the previous step. The staircase requires 25 steps. If you were to order the bricks for the mason, how would you determine the total number of bricks required for the staircase? In this lesson, you will learn how to calculate the sum of n terms in an AP. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to derive the formula for the sum of n terms in an arithmetic progression, also called AP. Apply the formula to calculate the sum of n terms in a given problem. APs display an interesting property that can help us derive a generic formula for calculating the sum of n terms. Take an example of a sequence of numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. If you add the first term, 2 to the last term, 12, in the sequence, the sum of the two terms equals 14. Similarly, if you add the second term to the fifth term and the third term to the fourth term, you get 4 plus 10 equals 14. 6 plus 8 equals 14. As you can see, the result of these additions is equal. This property can be observed in all APs, including reverse APs. For example, if you reverse the given AP, you get 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Now try adding the first and the last terms of this AP, that is 12 and 2. The sum is 14. Similarly, if you add the second term to the fifth term and the third term to the fourth term, the sum is 14. This shows a pattern that we can use to derive a formula for the sum of n terms. In a standard arithmetic sequence where a equals first term, d equals common difference, and n equals number of terms, the second term will be a plus d, and so on. 
In this way, you can compute each term till the nth term. Let the sum of these terms be s. Now, let's consider the reverse of this AP. In the reversed AP, the last term, A plus N minus 1 multiplied by D, appears in the first position, and the first term, A, in the last position. The sum of the terms of this AP also will be S. Now, add the corresponding terms of both the APs, that is, first term to first term, second term to second term, and so on. While calculating, you will find that the sum of the corresponding terms are equal in every case. Thus, we get 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d in every case. As there are n terms, the total sum will be equal to n multiplied by 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. As we are adding the two APs, the sum of n terms will be doubled, that is, it becomes 2s. So, to get s, that is, the sum of n terms of an AP, you have to divide the equation by 2. Thus, you get the formula for s. s equals n divided by 2 multiplied by 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. On further simplification, you get the sum of n terms in an AP. S equals n divided by 2 multiplied by the first term plus last term. Remember the Mason's problem? Using the formula for the sum of n terms, you can now determine the number of bricks to be ordered for the staircase. You can see that the number of bricks in the staircase forms an AP. According to the given data, the first step will have 4 bricks. Therefore, the first term A equals 4. Common difference D is 4. And the total number of steps in the staircase equals the number of terms in the progression, N, which is 25. You can apply the formula for sum of N terms to the given data. Substituting the values of N, A and D in the formula you get the value for the sum of n terms, s. After simplifying, you get s equals 1300. Therefore, the mason requires a total of 1,300 bricks to construct a staircase of 25 stamps.